Hello students. In the previous parts of this video, you have learned what are the different diseases affecting the pulp and periapex. In this part, we will learn how we will be diagnosing each condition in a clinical setup. Welcome you all to oral medicine and radiology made easy. Please like this video and subscribe to this channel. After seeing the different diseases affecting the pulp and periapex, are you confused? Let's simplify it. We all know during the oral medicine clinicals, we need to take case history and once the case history is taken, we need to do the local examination for the tooth of interest. So first we will record patient symptoms and from the patient's history, we will understand which is the tooth of interest and then we will proceed with the steps in local examination. The first one inspection, next is palpation and then percussion and after these three steps, we will be arriving at the provisional diagnosis. Once the provisional diagnosis is given, we will take IOPA radiograph and then we will correlate the clinical findings with the radiographic findings and arrive at the final diagnosis. So first we will record the symptoms. Then we will do examination in detail or the local examination. The components of local examination are inspection, palpation and percussion. So in the inspection, we will divide inspection into two parts that is inspection of hard tissue and inspection of soft tissue. In the inspection of hard tissue, we will be examining the tooth of interest that is the tooth which has decay. And in the soft tissue examination, we will be observing if there are any changes in the soft tissue around the tooth. Next is palpation. So in the palpation, first hard tissue, we will pass the probe lightly along the base of the caries and see if it is soft or hard or if there is any tenderness. Remember not to puncture the roof of the pulp when you pass the probe. And in the soft tissue examination, using the finger, you will palpate the buccal vestibule or lingual vestibule and see if patient feels tenderness. Next is percussion. Percussion we will be doing only for the hard tissue. Using the blunt end of the instrument, we will be tapping on the tooth either vertically or horizontally and see if there is any tenderness. So once we are done with the local examination, we will give the provisional diagnosis, then take a radiograph and then compare the clinical features with the radiographic feature and arrive at the final diagnosis. I have simplified the features of diseases in a tabular form so that it will be easy for you to arrive at the diagnosis during the clinical postings. The inspection and the palpation I have divided into heart tissue inspection, soft tissue inspection, heart tissue palpation and soft tissue palpation and it has been indicated by the change in the color. So whatever is in the light color is the soft tissue changes and the dark color is the heart tissue changes. Now starting with the first lesion, patient may report with the sharp pain initiated by sweet and cold and relieves soon. On inspection you may see a deep carious lesion. As all these diseases are because of dental caries, on inspection you will see deep carious lesion and soft tissue there are no changes. On palpation the base of the caries will be on dentin as it has not yet reached the pulp and no changes on palpation. Percussion, no tenderness and provisional diagnosis based on the patient's symptoms you will give as focal reversible pulpitis. When you take the radiograph, you may see coronal radiolucency nearing the pulp with a normal periapex and the final diagnosis is focal reversible pulpitis. The second condition the patient will report with sharp pain which continues to linger even after the removal of the stimuli. On inspection again you will see deep carious lesion. On soft tissue no changes. Palpation the base of the caries will be soft and may be tender and soft tissue palpation no changes. 
percussion, no tenderness, and provisional diagnosis based on the patient's history, it will be acute irreversible pulpitis. When you take the radiograph, again radiolucency extending to pulp with a normal periapex. So based on the patient's history, we will give the diagnosis of acute irreversible pulpitis. Next, patient may report with mild dull intermittent pain which is an indication of a chronic lesion. On inspection again deep carious lesion and no soft tissue changes. On palpation also no soft tissue changes and base of the caries is deep and is on the pulp. Percussion, no tenderness. So, the diagnosis is chronic irreversible pulpitis. Remember, on percussion if there is tenderness, that means the periapical region is involved. Whereas in pulpal condition, the periapex is healthy. Hence, there is no tenderness in any of these conditions. So, when you take the radiograph, you can see coronal radiolucency extending to pulp with a normal periapex. And the diagnosis is chronic irreversible pulpitis. Next, patient may report with the history of symptoms of pulpitis and in addition to that, there will be pain on chewing. On inspection, again deep carious lesion and no soft tissue changes. Palpation, base of the caries is deep and is on pulp and no soft tissue changes, but on percussion there will be tenderness and based on the clinical feature of tenderness on percussion, the diagnosis will be acute apical periodontitis. When you take the radiograph, you can see coronal radiolucency extending to pulp and normal periapex or widened PDL space with intact lamina dura. So, apical periodontitis, one important feature is that there will be tenderness on percussion and radiographically either there will be no change or there will be widened PDL space with intact lamina dura in the periapex. So based on these findings, the diagnosis is again acute apical periodontitis. Next condition, symptoms of pulpitis or generalized symptoms like fever, malaise etc. plus pain on chewing similar to apical periodontitis. And on inspection, you will see deep carious lesion. And soft tissue, sometimes there may be no changes. Or at a times, there may be redness of the attached gingiva or swelling on the gingiva. It depends on the duration of abscess. On palpation, base of the caries is deep and is on pulp. And vestibular tenderness is positive. That is, as the abscess is increasing in size, it will make its way through the medulla into the cortex and then it will lift up the periosteum and then rupture and form a sinus opening. So during this process, because of the resorption of the bone in that region, vestibular tenderness will be present and tenderness on vertical percussion is also positive. Based on the features of tenderness on palpation and tenderness on percussion, the diagnosis is given as acute periapical abscess. And in the radiograph, you can see coronal radiolucency extending to pulp, loss of lamina dura and slight widening of PDL space may be evident. And the final diagnosis is acute periapical abscess. So in apical periodontitis, the lamina dura is intact whereas in periapical abscess, lamina dura is lost. Next, occasional pain, intermittent pus discharge. These are the symptoms by the patient. On inspection, you can see deep carious lesion. And inspection of soft tissue, attached gingiva may have a sinus opening with perulis. On palpation, again, base of the caries is deep and is on pulp. And vestibular tenderness may or may not be present. On percussion, tenderness on vertical percussion may or may not be present. So, based on the finding of sinus opening, the diagnosis is given as chronic periapical abscess. And when you take the radiograph, you can see in the periapex there will be loss of lamina dura and ill-defined hazy radiolucency. So the case is diagnosed as chronic periapical abscess. Next condition, symptoms of pulpitis or general symptoms like fever malaise, pain on chewing and history of pus discharge. So this is a condition where you have mix of acute abscess and chronic abscess. 
So on inspection, deep carious lesion will be there and attached gingiva may appear red with a sinus opening. On palpation, you may have vestibular tenderness present with pus drainage from the sinus on applying pressure. On percussion, tenderness on vertical percussion will be there. So since the patient has features of both acute apical abscess and chronic abscess, the condition is diagnosed as acute exacerbation of chronic periapical abscess or phoenix abscess. And in the radiograph, you can see in the periapex, loss of lamina dura and ill-defined hazy radiolucency. And the final diagnosis is phoenix abscess. Next, patient may report with a symptom of mild, dull, intermittent pain. On inspection, you can see deep carious lesion, no soft tissue changes. On palpation, base of the caries is deep and on pulp. And no changes again on palpation. On percussion, no tenderness. So these features with mild intermittent pain and deep carious lesion suggestive of chronic irreversible pulpitis. But when you take the radiograph, you can see loss of lamina dura and well-defined hazy radiolucency measuring approximately less than 1 to 1.5 cm in diameter may or may not be surrounded by a sclerotic bone. The radiolucency is well defined. It is hazy and it measures less than 1 to 1.5 cm in diameter. And depending on the chronicity of the lesion, it may or may not be surrounded by a sclerotic bone. So based on the radiographic finding, the diagnosis is periapical granuloma. Now the patient may present with similar features. The deep carious lesion may be seen on inspection. Vestibular swelling may be evident at times. And base of the caries is deep and is on the pulp on palpation. And cortical expansion may be evident. On percussion, there is no tenderness and provisional diagnosis is chronic pulpitis. And if there is vestibular swelling or a cortical expansion felt, then the case is diagnosed as periapical abscess or cyst. On the radiograph, you can see loss of lamina dura, well-defined dense dark radiolucency measuring more than 1 to 1.5 cm in diameter and is surrounded by sclerotic bone. So in this case, there is a well-defined but dense dark radiolucency, not hazy like periapical granuloma and it measures more than 1 to 1.5 cm in diameter. Periapical granuloma is less than 1 to 1.5 cm whereas here it is more than 1.5 cm in diameter and invariably surrounded by sclerotic bone. So based on the features, it is diagnosed as periapical cyst. The next patient may present with mild, dull, intermittent pain. No changes on inspection of soft tissue. No changes on palpation of soft tissue. On hard tissue, you may see deep carious lesion, which is not tender on percussion. And provisional diagnosis is again chronic irreversible pulpitis. But when you take the radiograph, you can see loss of lamina dura with diffuse radio opacity around the apex. So unlike the previous lesions, here you can see radio opacity instead of radiolucency. And this is suggestive of condensing osteitis. These are some of the pulpal and periapical lesions. Step by step, how we can arrive at diagnosis. Coming to different scenarios. Patient complains of acute pain. On inspection, deep carious lesion is seen. And pain, if it subsides immediately, it is a case of focal reversible pulpitis. On inspection of soft tissue, if no changes are seen, on palpation no tenderness and no tenderness on percussion, then the case will be diagnosed as acute irreversible pulpitis. If there are no changes on soft tissue inspection, no changes on palpation, but there is tenderness on percussion, then it is a case of acute apical periodontitis. On inspection, if there are no changes, but there is tenderness on palpation and there is tenderness on percussion, then the case will be diagnosed as acute apical abscess. The patient complains of acute pain. On inspection, you see deep carious lesion and on inspection, soft tissue changes are present, tenderness on palpation present, 
tenderness on percussion present, then it's a case of acute apical abscess or phoenix abscess. Patient complains of occasional dull pain. On inspection, deep caries lesion and, and no soft tissue changes. No findings on palpation and percussion. Then the case will be diagnosed as chronic pulpitis. But when you take the radiograph, if lamina dura is intact and normal pedial space, then it's a case of chronic pulpitis. Now patient complains of occasional dull pain. On inspection, deep caries lesion and sinus opening are seen. No findings on palpation and percussion, then it's diagnosed as chronic periapical abscess. When you take the radiograph, you can see lamina dura is discontinuous with ill-defined hazy radiolucency at the periapex. And then the case is diagnosed as chronic periapical abscess. Patient complains of occasional dull pain. On inspection, you see deep carious lesion and no soft tissue changes. No findings on palpation and percussion. So the case is diagnosed as chronic pulpitis. When you take IOPA radiograph, you can see lamina dura is discontinuous with ill-defined radio opacity. So the case is condensing osteitis. Similar case, diagnosed as chronic pulpitis. In the radiograph, there is lamina dura discontinuous and well-defined hazy radiolucency measuring less than 1.5 cm may or may not be surrounded by sclerotic bone. It is a case of periapical granuloma. Similar case, diagnosed as chronic pulpitis. In the radiograph, you see discontinuous lamina dura with well-defined dense dark radiolucency measuring more than 1.5 cm surrounded by sclerotic bone suggestive of periapical cyst. Important point to remember here is that the cyst loses its sclerotic margin if it becomes secondarily infected. Otherwise, it's always surrounded by sclerotic bone. So, dental pain frequently is a result of deceased pulp and it's one of the most common symptoms a dentist is required to diagnose. Pulp and periapical diseases can be easily diagnosed if you understand the underlying pathology. With this, we come to the end of this video on pulp and periapical diseases simplified for final BDS students. Thank you.